congestion pricing was invented here in New York City. William Vickery in the 1950s, an economics professor who later went on to win the Nobel Prize for economics, came up with this concept that one of the most precious resources in a city is space. And that space needs to be priced, just like we price theater tickets, we price the airlines during the holiday season or hotel rooms, the same way we should price Fifth Avenue space. So congestion pricing is a way of setting a price so that we can achieve a level of service. Stockholm has congestion pricing. Gutenberg is about to do it in 2013. Singapore has been doing it for over 35 years now. We go to London and we see that they've introduced congestion pricing. The main purpose of congestion charging is to reduce traffic and congestion. So in cities like London, road space is a really scarce resource and we've got lots of competing demands for that space. We've got cars, freight, buses, taxis, pedestrians, cyclists. We also want to use space for public squares, street cafes, things like that. So congestion charging is a means of allocating that limited space, whereby motorists who want to drive on the roads within the zone pay a charge. Every day, if they want to drive in the zone, they pay £8. And it applies Monday to Friday, 7am to 6pm. Since the introduction of congestion charging, we've seen traffic in the zone reduced by about 20%. In practice, that means about 90,000 fewer vehicles in the zone every day. In 2008-9, there was about £150 million in net revenue that the charging scheme raised. By law, we have to use that money to put back into the transport system. And that was used for investment in buses, in cycling facilities, in walking, in maintenance. The people that are in their cars are moving faster, and the people that are in the subways are getting some kind of revenue stream that assists them in getting to their destinations faster. We're using less of the planet, lower carbon footprints, the air quality is better, we're all better off. An economist would say you have a certain amount of a good. How are you going to distribute that good? You can ration it by price or by queue. If you sort of underprice something, you're going to have a queue. When, when a store like uh, Costco has these sort of like Thanksgiving flat TV specials where there's a flat TV for $200, what happens? You have a line of people at the door in the morning because it's underpriced TV. So I think roads are sort of the same way. We, we give away road space for essentially nothing in this country. We have some of the lowest fuel taxes in the world. They don't pay for themselves. And it's no surprise that the result of that is our queues. We could choose to distribute that space differently through pricing. You wouldn't expect to fly home at Christmas and, and pay the same for flying in the middle of sort of September. And when there's peak demand in other areas of life, you pay more. Uh, the roads, we sort of just give it all away and then we're surprised. Congestion charging helps to encourage people out of their cars and onto other modes of transport such as public transport or cycling. And our monitoring shows that about 70% of people affected by the charge have actually switched to other modes. When charging was introduced, we saw an increase of about a third in the numbers of people coming into central London by bus during charging hours. About half of this is directly attributable to congestion charging. At the end of the day, it's about the value of your time. Your time has a value, if it's leisure time, if it's work time, and being able to pay to get home faster, pay to get to work faster, pay to meet your friends faster, whatever it is that you're going to do, we should have the ability to do that. So road pricing lets us do that. First of all, we have an infrastructure problem in this country. Second, we have a deficit problem. Third, oil prices are going up. So all, this is kind of a perfect storm of concern. I think on the left and on the right, there's starting to be a realization that we need to find solutions that make sense to fiscal conservatives, to environmentalists, to security folks, to people that are looking at this from a transportation angle or an energy angle, and really can move us forward in terms of opening a more competitive market among transportation modes. Let's face it, the supply and demand curve for gasoline has always been related to the size of the middle class. Well, folks, we're going to see a quintupling of the middle class with the Chinese middle class coming online, the Russian and Eastern Bloc countries coming online. That supply demand curve means that that demand is growing. Any world city that wants to compete in the 21st and is thinking about the 22nd century needs to think about congestion pricing.